Let's say you just hacked into someone's network. You are looking around and eventually you find something interesting, a file containing user credentials. Now, you want to transfer it back to your machine as quietly as possible. This process is called data exfiltration and in some cases it might be way harder than actually accessing the target's network. Data exfiltration is a rabbit hole by itself. There are plenty techniques you can use, but one that I find very cool and relatively easy to use is sending a file via DNS queries. But first let me tell you something about domain name system. You can think about it as a phone book of an internet. It translates domain names to IP addresses. And the great thing about it is that it's accessible almost everywhere because it will be very hard to operate a network without it. Every domain name is built out of labels, which are basically series of characters separated by a period. Now, every domain name also starts from a root label, which is zero characters long. And yeah, by the way, each label can be between zero and 33, uh, sorry, 63 characters long. So for example, domain support.google.com and uh, root label at the end contains uh, four labels. Uh, Amazon.pl and the root label, three labels, and basically yeah, that's, that's how it works. Now the DNS query itself looks like this. When you ask for google.com, first your device will think maybe it has an IP address cached somewhere already. If it doesn't, it will ask the resolver, which is basically a server uh, inside your ISP or inside an internet service provider. And the resolver will do the same. It will check if it doesn't have uh, the IP address of google.com cached somewhere. If it doesn't, it will ask a root server, which is the most important server in the DNS infrastructure. Actually, there are dozens of uh, root servers, but, uh, but still, they are so important because they know IP addresses of TLD servers and the root server will respond with one. Now, TLD servers are what's called top, uh, top level domain servers. Top level domains are domains like .com, .net, .org, uh, .pl, which is uh, a country domains, right? .uk, uh, basically the most popular, uh, the most popular ones. Now, the .com TLD server in this example won't know the exact uh, IP address, but will know when to direct you uh, further. It will direct you to authoritative name server, which, uh, which will know the exact uh, IP address. So this is like the lowest, uh, the lowest level, and it will respond to the resolver with google.com google IP, and the resolver will then uh, give, you, uh, give you the IP address. So that's the end of the chain. Some of you might have already figured out how this will work. We'll be sending our data instead of domain names in DNS queries. Uh, but this approach uh, would be very suspicious. Like, instead of asking for google.com, you're asking for user, user password. Like, you know, any security team would pick it up immediately. So we need to hide this, uh, this data somehow. And that's where text technography comes in. The technique or the art of hiding secret messages inside, inside the text so that it looks innocent and clean and legitimate. In our case, we want to translate data to domain names so that the file looking like this will end up looking like this. As you can see, we are using cloudfront.com domain with some gibberish uh, in the beginning. Now, this is not by accident. But again, including a random string in a domain name, even as a subdomain, would be very suspicious. But not in this case, because with CloudFront, it's very common to have subdomains that look like this. So we don't need to worry about it anymore. Now with that in mind, our tool will base64 encode the data and include it as a part of this random noise, making queries look legit. The tool that we're gonna use to perform the exfiltration itself is called Packet Whisper, and it's totally awesome. 
you can both transmit the data with it and it will perform all the necessary transformations for us and then it will help us extract the data that we get uh, back to its original form. So the whole process is extremely easy. Let me show you this scenario. Let's assume two things. First, we've already hacked to the target's company network and we located our sensitive file to be on one of the employee's laptop. Second thing is that if we hacked it, we put Packet Whisper on this, on this laptop and have it and can trigger it whenever we want, trigger it to start transmitting data. Now, it happens so that this employee, let's, let's call him Tom, it happens so that Tom every morning goes to the local coffee shop to do some work, get a coffee, you know, like everyone else. This is a perfect opportunity to exfiltrate this file quietly without anyone noticing. We will do it by uh, sniffing his network traffic. We can do this with ARP poisoning attack. I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. Uh, ARP poisoning is very well described by Network Chuck in his video, link in the description. Now, with this attack, we will act sort of like a proxy, like a man in the middle between Tom's laptop and the router in the local coffee shop. So every, uh, all the traffic that, uh, all, everything that Tom's uh, searching in the web, for example, will go first through us and then we will forward, forward it to the coffee shop router. And the router, all the traffic that uh, it needs to uh, send to Tom will first send to us and we will send it uh, to Tom. So this looks like this. Now, in this, uh, in this place where we are, we see Tom's traffic, including Tom's DNS requests, DNS queries. And if we see his DNS queries, we can start transmit, we can trigger Packet Whisper to start, to start transmitting our file and we can catch it with, uh, catch the queries with, for example, Wireshark on our device, save it to a pickup file or pickup like file, and then use Packet Whisper locally to extract the original file from a pickup. Now, this is uh, this may sound complicated, but let me show you a uh, proof of concept. Uh, this is quite simple. As you can see, I'm using Windows 10 as a simulation of uh, Tom's computer and, uh, and Kali machine as attackers. Uh, you run a packet whisper like this, and you can get it from, uh, from their GitHub repository, link in the description. Uh, yeah, we are assuming we have it installed on uh, on Tom's laptop. Let me uh, show you the preview of the data we will be extracting. So something like this. Actually, let me make it shorter just to uh, just to save time like this. Whatever. Uh, so basically, username, email, password, uh, password combination. So. Uh, choose uh, transmit as a first option, uh, provide a file, test.txt, uh, enter, select transfer mode, the first one, select cipher CloudFront prefixes, we want to uh, go with number three, preview sample of course, so our file will look like this, enter, do you want to uh, begin transfer yes and now we will have to set a delay first thing let me actually launch the uh, ARP poisoning attack with ethercap on interface eth0 this is the IP of the router this is the IP of Windows 10 machine so let's start wait for it uh, and okay and let's check with Wireshark on eth0 can we see the 192 one six eight. Uh, okay, not really, not really yet. Let's try generating some. Uh, let's try generating some traffic, like for example. Oh, okay. Now we can see. One nine two one six eight zero one twenty. Okay, so our poisoning works. 
so yeah, so we can start uh, start transmitting. Press enter. Progress uh, here, and can we see it? Yes, we can see our DNS uh, queries be popping here, and they have the uh, they have our CloudFront uh, prefix here. Okay, great, 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 great. So now uh, we just need to wait for this to finish, and I'll see you there. And here we go. It fin it's finished. Uh, so let me stop capturing and save the it as uh, an now uh data let's say save uh, i saved it to desktop right uh we can stop our arp attack arp poisoning and let's open a new terminal let me zoom in okay copy data.pc uh okay no no, no. cd desktop first copy data dot pc apng to the uh, to the packet whisper directory like this okay python packet whisper sure so now what we want to do is to extract file from pickup option two name data dot pc apng uh, what OS are you currently running on Linux? Okay, reading file from file. So this might take a while, so be patient. Okay, now uh, choose the first option, because we used the first option while transmitting Cypher's CloudFront prefixes. Uh, yeah, so now it's extracting. And now we need to save it to uh, to the separate file. Okay, so let's call it uh, sensitive data dot txt. And uh, yeah, and it's done. So let me exit packet whisper. Ls, as you can see, I have a couple of a couple of those. Uh, capture files already because I was testing it. Uh, mousepad sensitive data.txt. How does it look? And voila, we have we have exactly the same file exfiltrated from our uh, target's laptop without them even noticing and without anyone noticing. And that's how it's done. As a quick reminder, this was of course for educational purposes only, but uh, yeah, that's it for today. Leave a like and subscribe if you liked it, and if you didn't, please leave a comment and tell me what could I do better, what can be changed. But anyway, see you soon.